It says, the fourth and the last voyage of Christopher Columbus. As a last chance to regain his fortunes, the admiral asked for ships to make a new voyage of discovery. This the king and queen granted mainly to get rid of him. Mm. On May the 9th, 1502, Columbus set sail on his fourth and last and most adventurous voyage to America. He commanded four caravels, La Capitana Santiago de Palos, La Galega, and the Biscaya. His 13-year-old son, Ferdinand, went with him. Ferdinand's account of the voyage, written many years later in a biography of his father, is the best we have. Ferdinand had plenty of playmates aboard, for his father preferred strong, lively boys to old salts who were always grumbling and want to go home. At least one-third of the people on his voyage were boys, between 12 and 18 years old. The purpose of this voyage was to discover a passage to the Indian Ocean between Cuba and the other world. Found four years before. Columbus believed that South America lay a short distance southeast of China. This was a common belief until Magellan's ship returned from a voyage around the world in 1522. The fleet across, it crossed from the Canaries to Mart Martinique in 21 days and then sailed to Santo Domingo. Columbus noticed the signs of a West Indies hurricane about to break and sent a captain ashore to warn a vandal. A vandal however, laughed at Columbus and sent a big fleet to sea. It was struck by the hurricane and 20 ships were sunk with all their crews. Several ships struggled back to Santo Domingo, but only one, which happened to be carrying all the gold, Columbus's agent, had collected in Hispaniola, reached Spain safely. In the meantime, the four ships led by Columbus came through the hurricane with little damage. The ships met in the port of Azula, west of Santo Domingo. From Azula, they sailed past Jamaica to southern Cuba and crossed the Caribbean to the Bay Islands off the coast of Honduras. It was Ju July the 30th, 1502. For the rest of the year, they sailed east and south along the coast of Central America, looking for the strait that was not there. They had to buck headwinds and foul weather along the Mosquito Coast. Everyone was tired and soaked to the skin. Columbus said this was the longest and grimmest tempest he had ever been through. Ferdinand rode about a storm off the coast of Panama. What with the heat and the wet, our heart track, our heart tack became so wormy that God helped me. I saw many sailors who waited till darkness to eat so they would not see the maggots. <laughs> On reaching Al Maranti Bay in the present Republic of Panama, <laughs> Columbus learned that another ocean lay only a few days' march across the mountains. <laughs> but he had not found a strait leading to that ocean. He spent New Year's Day 1503 anchored off the site of the present day United States naval base at Coco Solo, Canal Zone, but the explorers never learned how near the Pacific Ocean was. The Indians of Costa Rica and Panama were more civilized than any that Europeans had met before. Columbus had trading cloth beads and various small wares obtained a valuable load of copper and gold objects such as mass great disc and bird shaped pendants after passing porto bello and finding no strait he turned westward again and tried to found a colony in the province of veragua where gold was plentiful and easy to mine the local gua the Guayimi Indians were willing to trade but did not want the Spaniards as permanent guests. The local chief, El Quibian, was friendly at first, but soon he got ugly. Bartholomew Columbus and Diego Mendez captured El Quibian as a hostage. 
the Indian chief jumped overboard and escaped. Then he led his warriors to attack the village that the Spaniards were building beside the Bellin River. The Indians killed a number of Spaniards, including Captain Diego Tristan of the Capitana, before they were driven off. Columbus could not leave the rest to certain death. He took them all aboard and started home on April the 16th, 1503. Columbus had to move slowly along the coast as far east as possible because his ship, ships were leaking badly from hose eaten in the plank, planking by the terredos or shipworms. Abandoning the two least seaworthy ships, he cut across the Caribbean. On June the 25th, the waterlogged Capitana and Santiago were beached at St. Anne's Bay on the north coast of the large island of Jamaica. Mm -mm. There Columbus was marooned for a year. He sent Captain Diego Mendez in an Indian dugout canoe 